One of the most satisfying things I've ever done is scan my entire house at a one-to-one -one scale into Minecraft. Yes, you heard that right. Every single wall, every single room, every single hallway perfectly aligned to my actual house inside of Minecraft VR. Well, almost perfectly. But there was one big thing missing from that crazy project. All of my belongings. Yeah, my Minecraft house was pretty empty and lonely. But come on, we all know there's an easy fix to this. I just need to scan all of my belongings, everything I hold near and dear to my heart, into Minecraft. <laughs> Will that actually work? Is that actually possible? Well, there's only one way to find out. So I'm gonna scan a bunch of things that mean a lot to me, then try and accurately convert them into Minecraft. And if successful, I should be able to fly around my belongings in VR. I may never need to leave the Minecraft metaverse ever again. Ever again, I could live inside of Minecraft. Okay, let's start scanning some things. And what better place to start than my pride and joy? The thing that started this whole crazy adventure. The only reason this channel exists. Yep, I'm talking about my beautiful iMac G3. <laughs> okay, I feel like the iMac G3 is the best place to start because as you can see, it is not square. It's kind of like a weird shape. So the way I'm gonna scan all my belongings into Minecraft is by using an app called Polycam. Polycam is actually kind of insane. It can do a bunch of wild things, but what I'm interested in using is the photo mode. So using Polycam, you can take a bunch of photos of the object you wanna scan, and Polycam will turn those photos into a 3D scan, a really high detailed 3D scan. At least that's the plan. See, I actually used Polycam in my second attempt of scanning my whole house into Minecraft. My original one-to-one -one build of my house in Minecraft wasn't really accurate. I did it by walking around my entire house and manually outlining each room and then adding blocks to create all the walls. Very fun, but very dangerous. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh scatty. So to try and fix its glaring flaws, I used Polycam to scan my entire house, essentially creating a 3D object, a one-to-one -one scan of my house, which I was then able to convert into Minecraft. I'll get into how that works a little later on. So instead of scanning my entire house, let's use Polycam to scan a bunch of my belongings. Using Polycam, I just have to move around the object and it will automatically take a bunch of photos. Here we go upload and process. Okay, only time will tell how well that scan worked. Probably should have done it in a better place. This doesn't seem like it's enough room to get everything scanned correctly. But I guess we'll find out. Here we go, processing. Ooh, that's not... <laughs> Frick. Okay, this could be more challenging than I thought. It's technically not bad what happened to the back of it, dude? As I expected, the translucent design kind of messed it up a little bit. And my big softbox light could be a problem. We might need to do this somewhere else. Okay, so I've come outside because the lighting is a little bit more even and hopefully we won't get any weird lighting artifacts like we did with my studio lighting. This is so crazy, but it should be awesome. Let's scan some things. Ah, uh, okay. This is surprisingly time consuming to do. I have to circle around each object a bunch of times to try and get as much detail and accuracy as possible. But things are starting to feel very repetitive. <laughs> if you've ever done something that feels like it's never gonna end, uh, you know the feeling. Normally I just have like a coffee at this point to kind of like push through. But if I'm honest, coffee just makes me feel a little hands shaking, heart racing, mind spinning, but not in a productive way, like in a, in a very bad way. <laughs> which is where the legends at Magic Mind come in. Instead of loading up on coffee every few hours, I've been starting my day with one of these for the last seven days. Magic Mind sent me a bunch of shots a few months ago, not sponsored, and I just really enjoyed them. So I'm stoked they're sponsoring today's video. And over the last few days, I've seen my focus increase by having these instead of a ridiculous amount of coffee. <laughs> See, Magic Mind's mental performance shots are packed with things you actually need. It's got matcha that gives you a smooth energy boost. None of those coffee shakes. <laughs> Plus, each bottle has over 100% of your daily vitamin C and D. These shots include City Column, which is great for mental sharpness, as well as reissue mushrooms that can help with your immunity. Plus, the included herbs are also great for reducing stress, which means I'm chilling while we're cranking out these scans. And hey, look, you don't have to 
completely get rid of coffee because the L-theanine and Magic Mind actually helps the effects of coffee last longer. So instead of having a bunch of coffees every few hours, I just have one of these in the morning and I'm good to go. Magic Mind's also doing a bunch of good for mental health charities across the US. So if you're curious to try it out for yourself, make sure you check out the link in my description. Using Zaka Training gets you 48% off for your first subscription over the next 10 days or 20% off for a one-time purchase. Huge shout out to Magic Mind for supporting the channel and uh, hey, let's finish scanning these objects. <sighs> okay, bad news. The iMac really isn't playing ball. The LiDAR scan seems worse. We might have to come back to the iMac. I knew this was gonna be a problem. Let's scan my keyboard. Oh yeah, here we go. I don't really have a method for this. I'm just moving around the object. <laughs> Who knows, bro, I don't. <laughs> I'm literally just taking a shot in the dark here. We could end up with a bunch of buckets in Minecraft at this rate. That's uploading, let's do the next device. Everything about this is so janky. <laughs> okay. I am so excited for this one, dude. This is gonna be awesome. Bro, this is physical work. <laughs> okay, let's get a little more complicated. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Lego inside of Minecraft. It's like it's meant to be. This could be up there as one of the silliest things that I've done. Though I have done a lot of silly things for this channel. I feel like this one's gonna need a bit more scanning than the others. Hey, watch out, Scatty. I'm gonna scan you in soon, don't you worry. <sighs> Holy smokes, okay. I'm back inside for a few reasons, mainly because I live in Australia and it's on average 100 million degrees Fahrenheit. Not an exaggeration, but also I think it'll be a little easier inside to scan these little objects. I've got a few of my favorite devices here, including my first ever camera. This is the first camera that I could afford to buy to make YouTube videos and uh, ha, this thing has been all around the world. So let's do this. Let's scan some small objects. Let's start with the iPhone Classic. What could possibly be a good reason to scan all my belongings into Minecraft VR? It's not a bad way to avoid all my problems. <laughs> ah, the iPhone 3GS. This was my first ever smartphone. So cool. Frick. <laughs> this is my sister's Nintendo DS. Uh, I just have so many good memories of playing Nintendogs on this thing. So uh, let's scan it in. This was given to me by my mate Reese, so technically it's not my belonging. <laughs> but I just thought, how sick would it be to see a camcorder in Minecraft? That would be wild. Okay, let's scan it in. So this is an interesting scan because, uh, well, the goal is to look at all the scans that I have done in Minecraft in Minecraft VR. So let's scan the Quest 3 into Minecraft VR and look at it with the Quest 3. Yeah, that's a trip. <laughs> Okay, so I'm pretty sure I have everything I want scanned, which is good, but the job has only just begun. <laughs> see, now we have to go through all of the scans and uh, see if they worked, and then work out how to convert them into 3D objects that can then be imported into Minecraft. Okay, so this is Polycam Online, and essentially I created an album of all the things we scanned, and some things scanned well and other things didn't scan at all. <laughs> Let's have a look at some of these. Things like my Bible scanned pretty well. That didn't scan too bad. It didn't scan great, but this part looks really good. But the iPhone 3GS, uh... <laughs> Frick. <laughs> Kinda had a feeling that one wasn't gonna work real well. Another one that works pretty well is the F1 car, surprisingly. Again, it's not perfect, but it did get a lot of the proportions right. Like that's actually pretty impressive considering how high detailed the car is. What I'll have to do though is go through and crop out this freaking bucket. <laughs> so dumb. But the AirPods on the other hand, wait, I was gonna say they didn't work, but they, <laughs> they didn't work. Yeah, they didn't work. That's not good. I don't even think uh, the old crop situation is gonna help that one out, unfortunately. I still think we have enough objects scanned well here to see what they look like inside of Minecraft. So let's try and convert them all into Minecraft schematics. So to convert these 3D objects into a schematic file, which is just a file that can be used inside of Minecraft, we gotta use this fancy app, simply called OBJ to schematic, funny that. 
It's kind of crazy that this app even exists. And if you want to try it out for yourself, make sure you go check out and support the creator of it down below. Okay, all you have to do is upload the 3D object. I don't know which one this is, but let's upload it. Load mesh. Oh. Hey, all right, here we go. So I have my watch loaded up, which man, the detail on the dial is actually pretty impressive, far out. And then all you have to do is scroll down here and just hit voxelize mesh. And I don't know if you can see that, but essentially it's converted the 3D object into a bunch of blocks. Now think about how big this watch will be in Minecraft. I mean, it's a flipping mountain, but I think that's kind of sick. And can you imagine, I cannot wait to fly around this giant watch inside of Minecraft. That's gonna be so stupid. Now we can change the size of the voxels, which is the blocks. So as you can see, it's a little smaller. And that honestly might be the way to go, just so things aren't outrageously large. Now that that's done, the next step is to convert all of these blocks or voxels into actual Minecraft blocks. I have no idea what it's gonna do when I do this. So let's just see what happens. So I just go assign blocks and there you have it. So I'm not exactly sure how the algorithm works, but I'm assuming it just finds the closest block with the similar color. I mean, that's freaking so sick, man. And just like that, we've converted the 3D object into a usable Minecraft file. Ooh, okay. It says that a bunch of the blocks are not supported by dot schematic, which means we might need to use light schematic. I've never used that plugin before, so that could be a challenge, but I'm just going to send it, convert all the files, and what could possibly go wrong? So I started converting each object one by one, trying to keep the proportions correct and ensuring their colors were as close to accurate as possible. I definitely underestimated how long this part would take. <laughs> Turns out I have a lot of knickknacks that I do care about. Items that I don't think I could really ever let go of. Each one of these things hold a story. I can tell you so many stories about each one of them. So many good memories, so many hard memories. That's the weird thing about things. And soon they'll all be stored and backed up inside of Minecraft. They will live forever. Unless I accidentally delete the world file, I should probably back that up. Okay, legends, it is time to see what all my belongings look like in Minecraft. <laughs> This has to be one of the strangest projects that I've done, but from the few glimpses that I've caught of everything, I'm very excited to see this in VR. We're going in. Okay, hopefully the quest can handle how freaking big everything is. Holy freak, dude. Yo, the F1 car? No way. <laughs> That's outrageous, dude. Oh, that is so sick. My camera, let's go. What the heck, dude? Dude, my Bible is so big. <laughs> this is so bizarre. Wow. Yo, the iBook, yes, that looks so cool. Yes, let's go. Ah, uh -huh. and of course, the Macintosh. That looks so sick. It looks like a few of the voxels were converted to light blocks which I'm so glad they were, because that kind of looks so dope. I should make it daytime so we can see this properly. Ooh. Oh no, Questcraft crashed. <laughs> Shoot. Okay, we're back. Yo. That is so sick. And the iMac, dude. Now you may have noticed I am humongous in Minecraft, not in real life, thank you. <laughs> and that's because these objects are so freaking big, I had to scale myself up. But let's see what it looks like if I'm scaled down. Look how freaking big that thing is, dude. No way. This is so sick. Yo, the Quest headset. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> oh man, how cool. It's like being in a theme park of all of my favorite things. It's so bizarre. <laughs> Even the DS all kind of messed up still looks so dope. This is so weird, man. Holy smokes. I can't right now, that's so crazy. What started as a very goofy project became a very bittersweet moment. See, as I was standing in Minecraft VR, looking at all the things that I care about, I was just like hit with a wave of memories. Because at the end of the day, these things are just that, things. And sure, they may trigger special memories and trigger special moments in my life that I care a lot about, but they're nothing more than reminders. Reminders of memories I have up here and experiences I feel down here. Anyway, I wonder if I can scan my dog into Minecraft VR.